calcium sulfate as a stimulus in regenerative surgery. Calcium sulfate was originally used over 150 years ago in orthopedic surgery, and it was found to be effective and also safe. I was introduced to calcium sulfate therapy by Dr. John Sodasani, a good friend, who published an article in 1997 outlining the properties of this and how impactful it can be. Now let's talk about uh, what's great about calcium sulfate. First of all, you want to use a medical grade dihydrate calcium sulfate. The most important thing is it is angiogenic. This means it stimulates the growth of blood vessels, but it also stimulates osteoblasts to continue to begin laying down bone. Here's a very important factor, and we're highlighting that because this will be proved very significant in the case that I'm going to demonstrate uh, using the coronary position flap. It resorbs in 6 to 14 weeks. It is very compatible uh, with bone regeneration, and it is osteoconductive. It aids in infection control, and very importantly, it bound, binds bone particles together, which makes handling bone grafting material so very much easier. You want to use medical grade dihydrate calcium sulfate. The major property on this, which is so impactful, is angiogenesis. It stimulates the growth of blood vessels and osteoblasts. Very importantly, and this is highlighted, it, resor it resorbs in six to 14 weeks, and we'll talk about that later on a case where we use this on a coronally positioned flap. It is very compatible with bone regeneration. It's osteoconductive. It aids in infection control, and very importantly, it binds bone particles together, which makes handling the bone so much easier. It can be used as a barrier uh, in regenerative surgery to prevent uh, epithelial migration. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, it has been used in orthopedic surgery for over 150 years. The anhydrous calcium sulfate is placed in a dampened dish and then dampened with a little water to make a thick paste. The collar tape is made by Zimmer and one strip is one by three inches. So you can see how multiple strips have been made so that you can get four or five strips to place in the calcium sulfate. Now remember, the calcium sulfate is the active ingredient and the collotape strips are the carrier product. Because remember, the collotape strips are going to resorb in 10 to 14 days, whereas the calcium sulfate is going to remain active for several weeks. So here we're mixing the thick paste and this is the product information sheet from Zimmer and remember each piece is one by three inches and this is cut up into four or five little strips which will be placed and used as the carrier product but you see this uh, carrier product only lasts for 10 to 14 days. Here we see a true class two recession. It's about five millimeters and there is no keratinized tissue either attached or unattached in the apical area. And certainly before the technique that I'm showing you, this would necessarily be grafted. And in my hands, we would be using connective tissue. Now, here we're inserting the collagen tape into the tunnel and this technique was presented by Sandy Allen back in the early 1990s in the International Journal of Periodontics and Restorative Dentistry. But before showing the next slide, I want you to look at the thickness of the tissue apical to the collagen strip. This would be a normal to a thin biotype. But after inserting that in there with multiple strips, you can see how we have created a thick biotype which I think is very significant. But after we put multiple strips in there, and unlike connective tissue, alloderm, and so forth, whether this uh, uh, bunches up, circles up, makes no difference. We're just using that as a carrier material for the calcium sulfate to create a thicker biotype. 
We've talked many times about the outbound, inbound suturing technique, so here we're beginning to do that, and now that is complete. And you will notice that we did not completely cover some of the collotate strip. I was very concerned with this, but let's see how that turned out. We see this at a week. Again, we see the outbound, inbound suturing technique, and you can see that we have created about three to four millimeters of tissue in the area, but we do not have complete root coverage. And it appears that we're going to end up with some level of keratinized tissue. But we did not get complete root coverage. And we're going to see if using this technique, ultimately, we'll get the creeping attachment that we hope to see to completely cover that root. At three weeks post-op, we begin to see the formation of a mucogingival junction and also a free gingival groove. But we see we do not still have the complete root coverage. We then go out a, a little bit longer and you will notice that we still have not complete root coverage. We did get it on the premolar, but we have nice thick tissue there. But this is where we hope to get some creeping attachment and I, we're curious to see if that is going to happen. So this is the pre-op, and then we see the patient 15 months later, and look at what appears to be keratinized tissue all the way to the cemental enamel junction with 100% root coverage. This is very impactful, and so I think we need to decide what is more impactful, the calcium sulfate or the strip. Let's talk about resorption rates. First of all, we know that the collotape resorbs in 10 to 14 days. And remember, this is just the carrier because I think the significant thing is the calcium sulfate because it remains active for six to 14 weeks. So I think the impact of the calcium sulfate because it continues longer is the regenerative material and not the collotape. Let's talk about the advantages of performing the coronal position flap using this technique. You'll remember these two slides from the coronal position flap technique, and this is a class two recession because the gingiva on the facial of that canine is unattached, and it's only two millimeters vertically, so it does not fit the criteria of three millimeters vertical keratinized tissue for coronal position. Now, if we use the technique that we've just talked about, we do know that this is going to increase the thickness and we're going to get a thicker biotype. Bio and it appears on the last slide that we have converted albedin mucosa into keratinized tissue. And you'll note that there are multiple question marks on that. Because this is a proof in principle case, and many cases need to be treated, again using the coronal position flap with a calcium sulfate which is embedded in the collotape. So therefore, I think we have the opportunity of doing a very simple and effective way of root coverage crafting using this technique and using this product in GBR as a product to be added to the bone. Thank you very much.